what do you want to be when you grow up? That's got to be a question that you've thought about numerous times. I asked my children this. Uh, my nine-year-old, he drew a picture for me. He said, Dad, I want to be a pilot. He's never flown before, but he wants to be a pilot. He's interested in flying through the air. He loves seeing planes. And he thinks they make a lot of money. My seven-year-old son, he's more interested in being a professional race truck driver. So we're from an area where race truck driving is a big deal. And uh, he's very excited for the potential to do that. All right. My daughter is four. And she said that she wants to be a normal mom, just like her mom, which is my wife transitioned as a dietitian to be a stay-at-home mom. So all my kids know of her is that she's a stay-at-home mom, which is awesome. And that's been a huge blessing for us. So that's what my little Annie wants to do. She wants to be a, a stay-at-home normal mom. So for me, it was an interesting thing. I wanted initially to be a police officer when I was younger. And that changed probably numerous times. But to figure out how that changed or why that changed, I want you to think about that as well in your life. Why did that change or how did that change? What kind of opportunities did you have that you saw or that you were part of where that changed your mind or changed your outlook? So for me, when I was in college and in high school, I wanted to be a dentist. I thought that was the coolest thing. I was going to school and then I was going to go to dental school in the only dental school in Wisconsin, which was Marquette University. They contacted me. They were recruiting me to go there. I was all excited. Um, and then I job shadowed a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I changed my mind immediately and changed my course of action. Okay, um, It was just something that wasn't as exciting as I thought it would be. So I changed that immediately. Now there's, I can think of that moment that I had that opportunity to do that. I was able to job shadow police officers and a lot of other folks and um, those were those opportunities that were golden for me. Now, looking back, I think of other folks that have had those opportunities as well. So. I think of um, in graduate school, I went to graduate school a thousand miles south of where I'm from. And that was, it was an awesome experience. But those students that I was with, my cohort of graduate students that were going for counseling was, was interesting because about half of them were going to be teachers. And I said, well, what are you doing in graduate school being a counselor? And they said, well, during my student teaching, it, the answer was different, but during my student teaching, either I found out that I didn't want to do that. I even had one that said, I don't like kids. I found out during my student teaching, I don't like kids. So I thank them for changing their profession. <laughs> now, for me, my profession changed numerous times. And I think of trying to blend what I would call vocation, so something that I'm super passionate about or something that I feel as though I was born to do versus my occupation, which is something that I get paid to do. You know, where do I occupy a space and I get paid for that? So blending those two things is important to me personally, but now it's super important for me to do that with my students and my staff. I think of a student that I had in La Crosse, Wisconsin, at UW La Crosse. A uh, student turned one of my best friends, actually, but in his high school experience, he it was unique. He was, he was sick. He said he's a pro professional sick student is what he was. So when other folks were working to um, get their homecoming dresses and adjust to high school life and they're so excited about you know, the statistics class that they get to take or something like that and making friends, he was um, going to the children's hospital about two hours away from where he lived. And he was um, working specifically with, with special doctors to make sure that he was going to be all right. He needed a liver transplant at age 14. He ended up doing really well in school, ended up at the U University of Wisconsin La Crosse, um, and things improved slightly. So he was working on campus. He was a great student. Um, but during student orientation, where all those freshmen or first year students are, are getting to know each other and figuring out what it's going to look like on campus, 
um, where are all the cute boys and girls staying, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, his parents were there and they had to show him, they had to figure out the bus route. Now for him, he had to get IV drugs uh, a couple times a week. So he had to figure out how to get to the hospital to get those IV drugs. Uh, he needed to figure out if it was midnight and his counts were low, how is he going to get to the hospital? How is he going to get to the emergency room? So just a very unique situation for a, for a college student. He, um, he needed a second transplant at the age of 25, a liver transplant, and that was successful. And now, fast forward just a couple years, he's a young guy, um, he's working now at a school, a college, that is, um, that's about, about 20 minutes south of the Twin Cities, and he is in charge of Disability Resource Center. So what his job is, is he works with all the college students on campus that have visual or invisible disabilities, whether you can see it or not. He works with them and he connects individually with them to figure out how he can help them work through college and work through life with those disabilities. So talk about vocation and occupation for that young man. That's pretty exciting. That's, that's perfect. That is just a perfect thing. I have another student that came to me from an outside district as a, when I was a school counselor. And, sh and a lot of times for our freshmen and for our new students, I'll ask them, you know, what are you interested in doing after high school? And she's a freshman and she said, I'm going to be a social worker. And a lot of freshmen, I'm not sure if they even know what social work is. So I asked, like, what, what makes you so passionate about being a social worker? And she said, well, I've been in and out of the foster care system since I was a baby. And I want to help people that are in the foster care system. I want to help people like me because it's hard. So for that young lady, she's already figured out her vocation and occupation at the age of 14. It's not as easy for all of us and for all, some of my other students. So my big question is, how do we help students figure that out? I think a lot of it has to do with the opportunities we give them. Um, and in a rural district, so I work in a district that has about 300 students total. We are a referendum district, which means money's funny for us. We don't have a lot of it. And every couple of years, we need to go to our tax base, our taxpayers, and ask for either to sustain and continue to give us some money or ask them for more money, which is hard because we live in a logging community, a lot of forest land and a lot of public land, hunting land, different things like that. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to work individually with these students and help them? So I'm going to tell you a few different things that we've learned and that we've done that's pretty exciting. And what I think is if a rural district in the complete middle of nowhere, then you take a left and that's where you find us. If we can do it, I think other, other districts can do it as well. So one of, the, one of the neat things that we have, and um, a lot of schools in Wisconsin have it, is a youth apprenticeship program. So we made our schedule so that our students, our seniors specifically, their required courses are first, second, and third hour. So by about 10.30 in the morning, if they have a job, they can dip out. They can go to work. For a lot of our students, they take advantage of that. Uh, we have students that are welding, that are CNAs, loggers, concrete workers. We have a number of students that are doing jobs that they want to do when they graduate as well, which is exciting. So that youth apprenticeship program is awesome. So part of that apprenticeship program last year, one of the partnerships that we created was with a nursing home right seven miles down the road. We only have one nursing home. We only have one science teacher. We only have one math teacher. We have one of a lot of things. So one nursing home in our area and they said, we need workers. We, have, we are short on CNAs. We have traveling CNAs come. We'll give a bonus to people that work here. We'll do whatever we can to get CNAs. And I said, well, we have, we have students that would be interested, so let's, let's figure something out. So what we came up with is th these high school students, some of them were 15, actually. We had four of them, four young ladies. Some of them were 15 at the time. They, took their book work classes at school. So we were able to help them through that. We have a virtual lab where the students are able to take one of hundreds of classes that we can offer virtually for them, including college classes. So they worked in that virtual lab and they did 20 hours of work, of book work, 
for what's it going to be like to be a nursing assistant or a certified nursing assistant. They got paid for that. They got paid like 15 bucks an hour to do that so for sitting at school, which kind of makes them a professional student, right? They got paid to sit in school. That's awesome. And then they got put on the schedule at this nursing home. So they worked hand in hand with the CNAs and they were able to help them and do different things and learn hands on, which I think that's what our students need. So they were able to do this and now actually last week we had two of the students that passed their CNA exam. One of them got 100% on both the written and the physical part. So they, uh, that's when their bonuses start too. So 1500 bucks for the first three months, 1500 bucks the next three months, $1,000 after that, and then another $1,000, okay? Pretty amazing. I had a student on Monday, one of our CNA students, she, said, uh, she sent me an email uh, Sunday night and said, they have no one to work the day shift tomorrow. I need to work and I apologize, but I will not be at school on Monday because I need to work. I found out later, uh, her mom works at the school, she said that they offered her um, $30. And I was like, oh, a $30 bonus, that's cool. She said, no, $30 an hour extra from what she makes already. So they're paying her about $45 an hour to do her CNA job. I had to hold back my secretary from going out to the nursing home. <laughs> I said, no, we cannot. If you're going, I'm going too. Let's do this. But I mean, how amazing of an opportunity is that for a 16-year-old girl, as well as for this nursing home? So what kind of partnerships can we do like that? If we can do it in a rural area, if we can do it in a tiny little school like ours, surely we can do it everywhere else. There's some other programs that we have. We, we partner with Nicolet College in Rhinelander for our welding program. So um, I'll use some percentages to make it sound more, more interesting, okay? So last year, 10% of our, of our graduating seniors graduated from Nicolet College before they graduated from high school. 10% is two students, but it's still cool. Um, so two of our students went through the welding program at school, and then a Nicolet College rep comes once either once a week or once every other week to get the rest of their credits that they need. So it's, it's based off of what they've learned. So did you learn this? Yes, you've done it. Did you TIG weld? Okay, did you did it, do it on aluminum? Boom, boom, boom. So they went through everything and they were able to get their math, everything specific that they needed to graduate with their diploma from Nicolet College before they graduated high school. We have four this year that are gonna do it. Two are women. It's pretty exciting, pretty awesome. And those, those students, they stick around. They are, they are in our community. We have people knocking on our doors saying, we want your students immediately, whether that's for a youth apprenticeship or for a full-time position. We had, a, we had a bank that contacted me and asked if I had any all-stars. I said, of course, they're all you know, all-stars. <laughs> um, so one, one of our students, one of our seniors is working at a bank and doing some bank teller. Uh, she's a bank teller, but they said, and I met with with the bank and with the student and they said, they said to the student, we saw you working at a grocery store in town. There's only one. Um, we saw you working at that grocery store and you were awesome. And we recruited you specifically because you're awesome. And we don't want you just to work as a teller here. We wanna develop your skills. We wanna send you to school. We want you to be a loan officer. We wanna want build you up and we want you to stay here with our company. And again, she's 17 years old. That's, that's pretty flattering, that's a good, partnership. So our students, again, I'll, I'll throw out percentages again, probably 50% of our students, if not more, take college classes. Okay, we have a very supportive school board. Our school board has never questioned once the price tag that we pay for our students to get college credit. Uh, the, my predecessor always said, for this program, you need to take a class that's not, not offered in high school. So if our students want to take an introductory to psychology course, well, Rich teaches that already. Yeah, but he doesn't teach it for college credit. College credit is through Nicolet College, so they're allowed to take that class. So the majority of our students take up to 18 credits, so when they graduate from high school, they have at least their 18 credits, which is great. That's a good head start. And for students where their transition to college is difficult, it's different. It's very different than high school. The rigor is completely different. So they get to do that while they have those two virtual lab folks or while they have their colleagues or their classmates to take those classes with them, which has been, which has been awesome. And then second semester, we're gonna do a speech class. We have a Nicolet instructor coming over and they're gonna teach it in our district. So I'm trying to get everybody to take that class. 
The max is 15, and I think we're at about 13 right now. So if you're a junior or senior, I mean, that's maxing out our numbers. I mean, but uh, if you're a junior or senior, that's something that we're really encouraging our students to take if they want to continue on with a four-year or a two-year because you're going to need it either way. So that's been pretty exciting, those partnerships. So I think two of, uh, there's, a, there's a, concrete a concrete company um, just outside of our town. And they said, we want your students. Let's have them come over and we'll get these excavators. We'll get all these bobcats. We'll do all this really cool stuff. And they could drive them and they could move dirt. And I was excited because I want to do that too. <laughs> So that's coming up. We're going to be able to do that. But those are the opportunities that we have and that we can make and that we can create. So, and as community members, those are something that you can, those are things that you can do as well, or as business owners or employees. I saw, I saw someone that did an ultrasound on me and they said, if you ever have any students that want to job shadow, just let us know. We'll do that. And I said, well, we're in a pandemic right now. We all wear masks all the time. And she said, it doesn't matter. We need employees. And if they want to do a job shadow, Call me. That's what you can do to help us. Okay, so I think that that's something that's very important. Is it's not just a it's not just a school thing. We're teaching them some pretty awesome things. We require an awesome course for our seniors. It's called Life After High School. They learn a lot. They learn a lot of life skills. They learn a lot of taxes, different things, different things that um, that maybe not people not our students haven't gotten in the past. So it's exciting. Um, and it was, a lot of this was done before I got there, so I take no credit for any of this. But it's exciting, and I think that this is something, again, if, if a referendum district can do it in the middle of nowhere, Wisconsin, I think we can all do it. So let's chip in together and uh, dream about what we can be when we grow up. Thank you.